This video is sponsored by PCBWay. Welcome everyone. In this video I'm going to show you another iteration of this ADS1256 data acquisition module. So when I published this project on my Patreon, I got a comment asking if I could add more GPIO pins uh, to this project. So I did it. And uh, the reason why I got this uh, question uh, is the following. So this is the previous uh, board. And basically there are no GPIO pins uh, broken out except uh, the SWCRK and SWD pins and RX and TX, but uh, there is uh, nothing else. Because all I wanted to do is to have the eight input channels for the AD converter and then a USB port. And then of course that project has been realized and uh, they have this nice uh, enclosure and everything. Uh, but as you can see there are no GPIO pins uh, whatsoever. Uh, because I wanted to have just a USB compatible uh, data acquisition module. But uh, obviously that might not uh, align with uh, other people's needs. So I made a GPIO uh, version. So this is the new PCB and uh, it's uh, quite, quite uh, messed up uh, in the sense that it's very uh, busy. If you see it from a closer perspective, there are a lot of wires all around the microcontroller because all they go back to the uh, back panel of this module and then they are broken out. So all the GPIO pins uh, uh, can be accessed uh, through these connectors. And I will show you later that these are all uh, JST connectors. I have all the connectors. Those are one millimeter uh, connectors and they should work uh, just fine. But of course, if uh, I still want to keep this enclosure design with this module, I had to do something uh, smart and I will show you what I did. But uh, basically we have the connectors here and then we have the front panel and now it comes in blue color as you can see uh, as opposed to the green one here and we have all the uh, pins which are actually here here and there on the front panel so they will be aligned with the USB and my idea is to uh, have something like this kind of uh, arrangement inside the box. So as you can see, the connectors will be here and there will be a short cable and then they will go uh, in the PCB. And this is the back side, so this will be inside the box. And then this is the front uh, side. So then uh, I have a set of connectors here as well. And uh, we can reach uh, the GPIO pins with the regular uh, 2.54 millimeter uh, jumper cables. So that's that. And as you can see there is a slight uh, improvement or uh, change in the design of this board. So if I shine it you can see that it has this uh, mesh uh, pattern. So I just wanted to have the ground pour with some pattern so it looks a bit more, I don't know, spectacular. And then also the screw holes look a bit better in my opinion at least. So I wanted to make it a bit more spectacular. So now instead of this panel, we will have uh, something like this, but I will assemble it and show it to you. But uh, yeah, now you can see. And obviously the rear panel also comes in blue. Uh, I will show that later when I uh, build everything together. But yeah, uh, we have this. So this is the outside and this is the inside of the panel and everything is nicely numbered and uh, so on. So you will be able to navigate uh, between the uh, pins. So basically what I will do in this video is that I will build uh, one of these uh, circuits. I will assemble it and then I will assemble the connectors, see how difficult it is and uh, try to uh, make it uh, nicely. And then uh, I have a few more of these uh, metal enclosures. So then I will test everything, how it fits in the enclosure. And uh, finally, uh, we will see if the GPIO pins work. So I will just uh, 
randomly pick a few uh, GPIO pin pins from here. Just simply connect an LED to it so I can see if I can switch it on and off. And then I will consider uh, it uh, working if it works. So that's the plan. And as usual, uh, these PCBs and also the stencil is coming from the sponsor of this video, PCBWay. So if you want to reproduce this project or you want to have more information about the project, go to my PCBWay project site. Link is in the description. And if you are already past the stage where you use someone else's design and you can design your own uh, circuit, please check out PCBWay's new competition where you can nominate your own circuit design and win valuable prizes. So head over to PCBWay's website and check their ongoing things. So now most of the parts are assembled. Uh, you could see that I also have these uh, JST uh, connectors. So that's that. And now I have to do some even more boring thing and uh, which is to check the distances. So basically the PCB will be located something like this. I will show you, I can uh, slide this in. And you can see that there is a gap. That's why I put the connector there. Because then what will happen is that if you check this, then you see that these pins down here, they are also under the PCB. So then basically, I just have to cut like 28 wires, I think. To this distance that you can see so between the connector and the back of the pcb and then crimp all of them and then uh, put them in the plug and then solder them here one by one so uh, that will be a bit challenging so i might not include it in the video because it's a bit uh, maybe too much so i will just uh, show you the final result and then it's uh, good for both of us but you you get the uh, principles here that uh, basically I have to have like two centimeters of wire or 2.5 maybe I will measure it and then just carefully wire everything together 
And then here you can see the uh, panels. So then these rows are aligned almost perfectly with these, except the pin number 16. Because of the layout here, I did not want to mess it up too much. Then I take the 16 here uh, from this, you can see at uh, my index finger. And that will actually go here. And then it uh, continues from here, uh, from 15 up to 0. And then 29 up to 5 volts. And then this will sit like this. So then uh, I will do it and show you the final result. So apparently I could not make the connections. Uh, it seems like that my crimping tool is not really compatible with that uh, connector. So I have this very tiny uh, JSDSH 1.0 or something like that. I will write it here. And uh, then it's a counter piece, uh, the plug and it's uh, crimp terminals. Uh, they are very difficult to make, so I could not make it. But that does not discourage me to test this thing. So I just uh, soldered some wires uh, at the end. And then I will test uh, just a few uh, connections. So then uh, after I discovered that this doesn't work, I uh, googled a little bit. And I figured out that I can actually buy uh, cables. And uh, those cables uh, could be fitted in this uh, terminal. So I can plug it in there. And then this side goes into the uh, terminal right here. So that's what we are going to have. Uh, here, this is the other uh, size, but it doesn't matter. Uh, you can see the terminal. So then the point is that I can buy wires which are already crimped and prepared with the terminal. So whatever number of pins I have here, I just plug in the uh, corresponding number of pins. And then uh, I still have to solder, of course, on the uh, front panel, but that uh, is easy, relatively easier than uh, crimping these things. But yeah, in, in the meantime, uh, I'm going to test this. So what we need to do is actually just flip this. And then this will uh, fit like this. So then I take this housing enclosure. And then that's that. So now I can uh, just... Uh, Screw this. So it's done. And basically this is it. Uh, you can see that uh, once it focuses, uh, soldering won't be easy here either, but uh, it's doable with some patience and flux. So yeah. So this is what we have here. USB goes here and then of course the uh, GPIO pins are on the front like this. And then here uh, we have the terminals and uh, this is for the ADC. So now I'm uh, going to my computer and uh, we will test it there. And uh, first I just do some readings from the ADC itself, uh, upload the software and everything. And then I will just switch a few pins on and off uh, just to see uh, if it works. So let's go to my computer. So we are here in front of my computer and uh, we are looking at the Arduino code that I have for my library. And we are going to use this line for this uh, specific board because it has the RP2040. And I configured the pins in the same way as it is uh, described or defined for the RP2040 zero. So that's why I wrote uh, this there. And this also means that if we go to the tools, then we have to compile uh, the code for this specific uh, microcontroller. Otherwise, for example, the SPI pins can be somewhere else, and then the code will not work. So this is what we have here. And I wrote also a little code here, uh, right here, is that, uh, yeah, I'm just uh, defining everything here as an output. These are the pins that I directly soldered on the front panel. And then, first of all, I just uh, set everything to low. And then here, I blink uh, the pin number 6, 
six uh, or sixth pin, uh, six GPIO pin, uh, ten times. And uh, as you can see it, uh, I'm also recording this thing. So on the side you can see that I connected a small uh, circuit to the pin number six, which is just an LED and a resistor. So then the pin number six powers the LED and then it goes back to the ground on the other side. And then when I start this thing up, then it should blink the LED. So let's see if it works. So a good sign that we got the message from the microcontroller. And then you can see the blinking now. So now we have the GPIO pins as well. And if I go back a little bit, then actually here you can see that the PGA has to be zero. Uh, the input channels should be 103 and the D rate should be 19. And uh, here we actually read these registers from the ADS1256 and print it on the serial terminal that you see right here. And uh, the numbers are identical, so you can see. So that means also that the uh, ADS1256 also works. And you could see that the uh, thing was blinking, the LED was blinking, so I also consider that uh, as a good uh, experiment. But uh, just to be sure, uh, let's try another pin uh, and let's see if that will blink. So if I scroll down, uh, we can pick another pin for this. Let's pick the 27. So all I need to do is I change it here first and then I try to find it on the front, front panel as well. And now I just upload the code like this. So we wait a few seconds and we will see if the LED will blink. So the uploading was successful. Message pops up. And the LED blinks. So I dare to extrapolate these results to a full success. So the only failure was here that I could not really crimp those tiny connectors, but I have already ordered uh, the, uh, the proper wires. So I will just have to solder instead of uh, crimping. And maybe in the future, if I get a bit extra money, because these tools are quite expensive, then I will buy a proper tool and uh, do the crimping myself. But uh, yeah. The project is uh, done and uh, I dare to say here that there will be no more iterations because now I'm using the chip to, to its full potential. Uh, all the GPIO pins are available on the front panel as you can see and so on and so on. So there is nothing else to do here than just uh, let's say improve the programming part uh, here and there or write some fancy stuff like uh, Fourier transformation and uh, other kind of data analysis things but that will happen in the future so if you are interested in this project uh, then visit my website and also visit my PCBWay project site and if you want to see similar projects or you just want to support me because of what I'm doing please consider supporting my channel via patreon or paypal so then I can buy new stuff and develop similar projects so I hope you like this video I hope you learned something and see you in the next video.